Okay, we're up to the fifth Aliyah, Vayi Techanan, verse chapter 5, fifth Aliyah, verse 19. The Lord spoke these words to your entire assembly at the mountain, out of the midst of the fire, the cloud and the opaque darkness, with a great voice which did not cease, and he inscribed them on two stone tablets and gave them to me. So these, these God spoke to everybody. It wasn't just Moses and, you know, by himself. Everybody heard that. Everybody heard that. And it was when you heard the voice from the midst of the darkness and the mountain was burning with fire that you approached me, all the heads of your tribes and your elders. And you said, Behold, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and his greatness. And we heard his voice from the midst of the fire. We saw this day that God speaks with man, yet man remains alive. So it is possible. This is possible on a national level. So now why should we die? For this great fire will consume us as if we continue to hear the voice of the Lord of, of the Lord our God anymore, we will die. So all of a sudden people start panicking. They're like, wait, if this continues on any longer, we're not gonna be able to ha handle it. For there for who is there of flesh who hear, heard the voice of the living God speaking from the midst of fire as we have had as we have and lived? So but you're you're still alive. So what are you worried about? So like again, sometimes so you see that sometimes like the people's fears, like the actual fears are worse than the actual situation. This is actually quite common. So this is an emotional, so it's not a, like a rational thing that they're saying because they were still alive while they're saying it and they heard God and they lived. But all of a sudden they started getting emotional. They're like, wait a minute, we can't, they, like it's not rational what they're saying. It's not logical because they were still alive while they heard God. So all, how did they come to the conclusion that they're going to die from hearing God's word? How did they come to that conclusion? Because their emotions took over. Okay, whatever. You, you, so the people went to Moses and said, you approach and hear all that the Lord our God will say and speak to us that the Lord our God will speak to you and we will hear and we will do. So, so you go, you, Moses, you go handle it. Even though we're claiming that nobody can stand and, and listen to God and live, we're going to send you, you go, you go, you go into the nuclear reactor. Go ahead, Moses. And so Moses, Moses is like, all right, I mean, I'm going to do it, right? Because I'm already there, you know? And the Lord heard the sound of your words when you spoke to me. And the Lord said to me, I've heard the sound of the words of the people that have spoken to you, and they have done well in all that they have. So, so God agrees with this. And would that their hearts be like this, to fear me and keep all the commandments all the days, that it might be well with them and their children forever. So, wow, you know, if they're really, really like, so scared, if they were, like, if we could just keep this fear, like, forever, like, it's going to be okay. We're, we're you know, because if as long as we're, like, have a little bit of pachad and a little bit of humility in our, in our, within ourselves, we'll be able to keep the commandments. But as soon as we don't, as soon as we don't really have that fear of God, you know, God's not really going to do anything. Come on. God's like way up there. Oh, God's not, you know, come on. God's not going to strike me down. Nothing's going to happen to me. There's not going to be a plague. A plague was like way back then. Like, oh, come on. The Torah was exaggerating. It was written by J E P and D. Like this isn't even written by God. Like as soon as we start like getting into this like mindset that it was like way back then, or it was like a long time ago, or that, you know, it's only for that generation. As soon as we start thinking these thoughts, like as soon as we don't have that fear, that we don't keep the commandments anymore. But, okay, verse 27. Go to them and say, return to your tents. But as for you, stay with me, stay, stay with me here, and I will speak with you all the commandments, the statutes, the ordinance, which you, which you will teach them, that they, that they may do them in the land which I give them to possess. Look, look, guys, listen. I don't know how much more the Torah can repeat itself about how important it is that we have Eretz Israel, Eretz Canaan, in order to do the mitzvot. Like the Torah itself is saying it. Keep them to perform them as the Lord your God has commanded you. Do not turn aside either to the right or to the left. In all the way which the Lord your God has commanded you, you shall go in order that you may live and that it may be well with you so you can put longer days in the land. <clears throat> as I said, Eretz Canaan, this is the location that we're supposed to be doing the mitzvot. I didn't make this up. I'm sorry. You know, if it really hurts, it's just like, people are like, well, I don't, I don't but you know, what can I do? Like, I didn't write this book. The Torah wrote you. That's what the Torah says. I'm not making this up. Don't get upset at me. Okay. This is the commandment, the statutes and orders that the Lord your God commanded you to teach you to perform in the land in which you were about to possess to possess it. We just said that in verse 30. Verse 30 and verse Olive are like the same thing. But again, the Torah is really super emphasizing this, this connection between the mitzvah and Eretz, Eretz Canaan, okay? In order that you fear the Lord your God to keep all statutes and commandments that command you, this is verse 2, this is like the same thing, right? In order that you fear the Lord your God to keep his statutes and commandments that command you, 
you, your son, your son's sons, all the days of your life in order that your days may be lengthened. And you shall therefore hearken, O Israel, and be sure to perform so that it will be good for you, so that you may, may, so that you may increase exceedingly, just as the Lord your God of your father spoke to you, a land flowing with milk and honey. I mean, how many verses is that? That's a lot of verses in just one, one Parsha that say the same thing. 